hi geographers i finally got round to making a new video so i hope you like it i've decided this time to do it a bit more freestyle uh, rather than doing the drawings and the narrating from a script later i thought i'd just talk while i go along and try to explain what i'm drawing so let me know which style you prefer today i want to look at rivers and why they speed up as they go downstream so why does river velocity increase as you go from the mouth of the river down to the from the source of the river sorry down to the mouth um if you look at typical gradient or river you can see it looks like this okay so it's a, a concave profile so down here near the mouth so well, my river actually looks like it's slipping up a bit there they have our mouth here okay so you can see down here it's not meant to be sloping up so here's the sea here's the mouth of the river so down here you can see it's quite a shallow gradient whereas up here near the source of the river it's much deeper so when you first look at it you might think that the river would flow faster up here near the source and a lot slower down here near the mouth because you know things flow more quickly if there's a deeper gradient um but actually it's the opposite and the velocity increases downstream so why is this well it's all to do with something called the efficiency of the river let me see if i can actually spell here efficiency river okay um, efficiency is how easily the water in the river can move okay is it hindered or stopped by anything or can it flow freely and easily there's two things that affect efficiency um the first one is channel roughness okay so this is just how smooth or rough the channel is now in the upper course of the river near the mouth upper course this is near the mouth the channel might look like this very jagged quite small there might be lots of jagged sort of rocks and big boulders and things in there here's your water here can you see there's lots of sort of bits of jagged rock and things sticking out into the water whereas down near the mouth in the lower course um your river is much smoother like that so you can see the banks and the bed of the river are much smoother and if there is any rock in there well there's likely to be rocks but they'll be a lot smaller and some of them will just be mud and sediment little particles and they also tend to be a lot rounder as well near the mouth and less jagged you can see how they're quite jagged up here um so it makes sense that the water down in the lower course kind of flow much more easily this channel here is more efficient than this channel up here the water can therefore flow a lot faster in the lower course um you can think about it imagine your what color should i use i have a nice pink here so you can just imagine that you are rollerblading let me do a nice rollerblade here that's not a very good rollerblade never mind anyway get the picture um if you're sort of rollerblading on ice for example and it's really really smooth then you're going to go really fast aren't you there you go okay um but now imagine if you were rollerblading on some jagged like soil or something sort of ground then you're not going to go fast at all you're going to go a lot slower in fact you'll probably get stuck so it's a bit like that um with the river so downstream it's like the ice situation and then upstream it's like the sort of jagged rough ground situation where you're just not going to be able to go very fast okay so let's have a look at the oh wait there is one word um that i've got to tell you that i think is important you're going to write it up here and that is friction okay so 
the friction decreases as you go downstream because it's smoother, less rough downstream. So if you have lots of friction, i.e. lots of friction when you're rollerblading over that rough ground, it's going to slow you down. And if you don't have very much friction, then you can go really, really fast. And that's why you can go really fast on ice when you're ice skating, because ice doesn't have very much friction. Doesn't have very much friction. Okay, so the second thing I want to look at, um, second thing that affects efficiency, what colour should we have? Let's have a nice dark blue, um, is hydraulic radius. Okay, now hydraulic radius is actually a measure of efficiency. Um, and this looks at how much of the river is slowed down by friction um, due to the water being in contact with the bed and banks. Okay, so let me just show you what I mean with a diagram. Okay, so we're going to have our jagged small upper course river again here okay and then we're going to have our nice big that's the other thing i didn't mention before but river channels they're much bigger as you get ice stream near the mouth um and that's because more water has been added from all the tributaries and things so the water is carved a much bigger channel so here's the water in our upper course river and here's the water in our lower course river um now in our upper course river if you imagine any water at the edge of the bed and banks here that is like touching the bed and bank is going to be slowed down by friction. So I'm going to just shade in all of this water is going to be slowed down. Slowed by friction. Okay, now if you have a look at the bigger smoother channel in the lower course I'm going to try and draw the same width is slowed by friction all the way around. So about that much, shade it in. All this part is slowed by friction. Now if you have a look at the upper course, upper course, let me just label them. If you have a look at the upper course, you can see that maybe, what, 50% of the water yeah, so maybe this shaded area here is about 50% of the water is slowed down by friction. But if you have, have a look in the lower course, I would say it's maybe about 10%. So near the source, around half of the water is being slowed down in my diagram anyway. A lot more of the water is slowed by friction compared to in the lower course, where the water is much freer overall to move. Uh, there's a smaller proportion of water smaller proportion is slowed by friction okay um so this relationship between the total amount of water in this area here okay and the amount of water along the edge here this sort of length all the way around the edge that is slowed by friction you can actually put that into a calculation called the hydraulic radius. So let's have a look at exactly what the hydraulic radius is. It's an equation um, which looks at the cross-sectional area of the river divided by the wetted perimeter. Okay, now the cross-sectional area is this bit here. Yeah, the area of this, you know, just like you'd find the area of a rectangle. And then the wetted perimeter goes from here, here the top of the water, all the way around to here. So it's that length. So that's unclear, I'm going to draw another picture in a minute. So it's that length, the wetted perimeter, the, the length of bed and bank that is wet, wetted by the water. Okay. Um, so if we have a look at an example down here, um, you can see what I mean. 
So here we have a small channel. So I'm going to I'm going to draw the channel represented by squares. Okay. So here we have a small channel, and we have two squares on each side and three at the bottom. Okay. So the the uh, cross sectional area is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six squares. So that's six, and then the wetter perimeter is going to be one, two, three. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so 6 divided by 7. That will be our hydraulic radius. So if we just calculate that, we get 0 0.8. Let's round it up. 86. Okay, so that is our hydraulic radius. Okay, now if we have a look at a bigger channel over here. Okay. This is my bigger channel. So the square got very even. Okay. So then we have three down here, and then we have one, two, three, four, six across here, and then three along here. So in this case, let me box that off so it's clear. Okay. So in this case, we have the cross sectional area, which is. 3 times 6, which is 12, that's the cross sectional area, divided by the wetter perimeter, which is 3 plus 6, which is 9 plus, oh no, wait, sorry, 3 times 6 is 18, sorry about that, <laughs> terrible math there, and then, sorry, the cross sectional area, 18, 3 times 6, and then wetter perimeter, 3 plus 6 plus 3, which is 12, so 12, is the wetted perimeter yeah so this is cross sectional area this is wetted perimeter okay so if we just divide 18 by 12 that comes out as 1.5 okay so you can see that the smaller channel over here in the lower course has a smaller hydraulic radius Whereas the big channel over here in the lower course has a bigger hydraulic radius. Yeah, so don't forget that we have this is the low, upper course here. Upper. Upper course. And that's near the source. And then here's the lower course of the river. And that is near the mouth. So that's going to be source. Okay, so you can see, quite obvious now, hopefully, hopefully quite obvious, um, that near the upper course, it has a smaller hydraulic radius, which means it's less efficient. And in the lower course, it has a bigger hydraulic radius, which means it's more efficient. Um, and as you know, a more efficient river can flow more easily. It flows faster. And that's because there's less water that is being slowed by friction in the lower course. A smaller proportion of water is being slowed. Okay, so if we just have a quick summary about why do rivers flow faster as they go in our stream, um, we could say that even though gradient um, decreases the what color did we have before channel roughness decreases so it gets smoother and hydraulic radius sorry about that hydraulic radius increases so the channel gets more efficient here we can say therefore the velocity of a river increases as you go downstream
Okay, um, I hope you liked that and it was useful and clear and understandable. Um, please leave me any comments if you didn't get it and you'd like me to do it again or any suggestions for improvement or anything like that. Um, I'll hopefully see you again with another video very soon. Bye!